Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I've got an interesting one to share with you guys tonight. So I was hunted on Reverb, and I saw this guitar get listed by Yeah Man Guitars over in Switzerland. Now, I just talked about how, you know, things getting listed late at night being too good to be true style prices. But the shop, I've heard of them. I mean, the price wasn't too crazy. But I saw a few things about this 1993 Les Paul Standard that piqued my interest. A, it had a custom finish and it was labeled a custom shop edition. So I made an offer on it. It got declined. So I was like, ah, all right, I'll make a better offer. <laughs> Gets accepted. But the other thing that made me curious, the shop said Tom Murphy might have painted this, which being in 1993, that is a possibility because a lot of the ones he painted, he would put his mark somewhere on it. Just like the ones that he ages, he hides a TM by the controls. But anyways, let's go ahead, figure out what is this weird color that I wanted to bring in here to document inside our pink case shroud. Ooh. That's quite nice. I like it. It was very, very, oh. Okay, so this is Brunswick Blue Sparkle from 1993. In all the photos, and I'm sure even in my photos, it's so hard to capture this, but it really has that really nice, shiny, sparkly, dark blue finish going on here. But I didn't realize it had a matching headstock. Man, I am so happy I took a chance on this because that just looks phenomenal. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but man, I was not expecting that. But then the back also has the Brunswick blue going on. Even the back of the neck, we've got our custom shop edition decal right there, which just is our history lesson here. Can't emphasize this enough. That does not mean this was made in the custom shop. That's just what a limited edition run guitar would have from, I think the earliest I've ever seen one is like late 1982 until 1993. Now, when you get into 1994, that's when, yes, sometimes you can find custom shops with that. The very early 59 reissues, etc., will have that. But then they kind of started to convert into the custom shop and all that. But what's really cool about this is generally these are like a limited run for a store and they just get lost to time or they were a catalog guitar. But this one still has a shop sticker on the back. It says Rainbow Music Shop in Marcus Walther. So it must have been like a, a UK exclusive or something like that. So yeah, kind of a cool guitar. A bit more beat up than I was expecting, but I think it's awesome to document a matching headstock. I think we were just talking about that in a Rock or Not episode. Matching headstock, Les Pauls. They just really didn't exist until the mod collection and demo shop came out and they started to do all these crazy things because they're limited one-off type stuff. So that is a really cool feature that I just found. Let's see, any other case candy in here? Yes, indeed. Despite our serial number dating it to late 1993, it wasn't finished until almost mid-1994. Wow. If you want to see some more cool custom colors, check out my 1990s Limited Colors Edition collection. But for today, let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Our pickups are just our standard Gibson USA style. The neck pickup looks like this. And the bridge pickup looks like this. Now, typically, you either have two 490Rs or you have a 490R, 498T. And in this case, it's the 498T because we have a 13.19K ohms in the bridge. Neck position, 7.61. And our middle, 4.82. Now, as far as the cavities themselves, nothing too special in the neck one. And the only time I've ever seen Tom Murphy's name in a guitar, it was right in the pickup. But if it happened to have been there, it's been covered over by the Brunswick Blue Sparkle finish. So we can't confirm that Murphy was involved with this, but it's definitely within the era that he was at Gibson. But you can see your maple top there joining onto the mahogany body. The gold on the pickups is surprisingly clean. Like you have a little bit of wear right here, but it still has that nice golden sheen to it. This guitar was actually played quite a bit. The reason I did my scratch remover polish job is because there were some pretty deep scratches like in this area. And thankfully I was able to get most of that off. Now, if you get this in the light just right, you can see some finish checking stemming by the knobs. I mean, that's pretty common in this era, but there you can see those right there. And there's some more finish checking right here. Documenting 90s era guitars. The first time I ran into this, I kind of got freaked out. Made in Japan. So the 70s and 80s ones are Schaller made in Germany, but in the early mid 90s, apparently they had a stint with Goto for their bridges or some other Japanese manufacturer, because I've seen this enough times to know it's stock. However, your tailpieces are actually still Schaller made because they have made in Germany on the back. I did find a few dings, one right here, another one right there. 
but just look how much the clear coat has actually aged on this thing. This probably started life as like a cream and or white color. Looking at the Gibson logo is a good tell how yellowed that is. But I really love the way that the plastics have aged this nice cream color. It looks very nice and matching between all the sets. But moving on from our maple top and mahogany body, we've got a mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. It's got all the standard specs, 22 medium jumbo style frets, acrylic trapezoid inlays, we've got a 12 inch fretboard radius, 24 3 quarter inch scale length. However, the owner of this one must have had very long fingernails because what you're seeing right here is not necessarily dirt and grime. That's where the fretboard has been scraped by somebody's long nails. So you can see it there, here. I'd say the worst area is right here. I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe it's a repaired crack. It's just kind of like a rough spot in the wood. But the frets are in great shape. Just a little bit of wear in the cowboy cord areas. As far as neck specs, we get 1.67 inches at the nut, 2.05 by the 12th, 0.88 at the first fret neck depth, and 0.99 by the 12th. I know those measurements make it seem large, but I would actually say this is more akin to like a 60s neck profile that just has a little bit more of a roundedness on the back. Here it is at the first fret and the 12th fret fairly consistent feeling neck. But now check this headstock out. This thing really came to life when I polished it up. Unfortunately, this gouge in the headstock didn't go away with the scratch removers, but it really helped all this blue sparkle come to life. That is a cool headstock. It's basic and simple. It's still dark like you normally see because most Les Paul headstocks are black, but it's such a dark blue finish. It just looks the same. I seriously didn't know that it had the matching headstock. That was such a fantastic find. I just thought, oh, Cool, now you use Les Paul Standard with the sparkly blue finish. I dig that. <laughs> that was just an added bonus. But our truss rod is in perfect shape right there, and the cover itself reads standard. Now, unfortunately, over here, there is a chip through the finish. But anyways, let's look inside our control cavity. We've got 1993 dated pots everywhere, which is what I would expect to see, and the solder joints appear original to me. We've got our strap buttons and our regular locations. They're all done up in gold. I guess that's something else that makes this fancy is the fact that we've got gold hardware on this. But there is another finished blemish right here on the edge. It looks like maybe it got dinged or something. And you got some lacquer shrinking around the heel joint. That looks much worse than it is, once again, because of the yellow lacquer. Kind of outlines that area. Hopefully this side's a little bit cleaner looking. This does have the thick binding in the cutaway, but you still have some finished cracking along where probably the maple top actually ends. Now we move up the back side of the neck. I also cleaned and polished this, but obviously you can't get rid of impressions on the neck. Thankfully, they're not too deep. You're not going to really notice them while you're playing, so I'm all right with that. But there's our beautiful Custom Shop Edition decal. I just love guitars that have that. I prefer the early 80s ones, but I'm really starting to get into these 90s models because there's just so many cool ones. And we don't know how many of them are made or usually the full story behind them. Maybe if this shop is still around, they can let us know the story behind this galactic sparkle blue. And just like on the face of the headstock, we've got a pretty nasty ding right here too. But here's our serial number dating it to 1993, 308th day of the year. Oh, 420 in production. It's always important to blacklight these older guitars. And there you can see that ding on the top a little bit more clearly, as well as a few of these other small ones. You can also see those finished checks a lot more easily right there and a few additional dings, but there we go. That's what I'm talking about on all the plastics. They glow very uniformly. You can see the bindings glowing like crazy, but look at this headstock. That's a nice even glow throughout. So you know that's not just some touch up that somebody else did like the lacquer flaked off and then they sprayed it over. Everything is matching here. Because just because something black lights doesn't mean it's an old finish. You're looking for an even glow throughout, because that'll show you the differences in finishes that have been applied. Backside of the guitar is looking good here. Run up the back of the neck, and everything's looking the way I would want to see. So if you're curious why I didn't remove the sticker, it's because, well, it tells the story of this guitar. And even if you remove it, you see those spots that have flaked off, you're always going to be able to see it under black light anyways, because the finish has not aged the same. So you might as well leave it on as long as it will stay on. And I'm sure you might be curious about the neck joint, so that looks good. Might as well run around the edges real quick. Kind of surprised not to see any like stand rash or anything. This was a very well kept guitar. All said and done, this is a chunky one. 10 pounds, 4.3 ounces, and all that weight is in the body. You can feel it on this one. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and get a tone sample out of this one.
we know all about the Brunswick Blue Sparkle Les Paul Standard from 1993. What are my final thoughts on this thing? I'm definitely glad I brought it back from Switzerland because this thing had a very cool surprise on the headstock. It's not the best guitar to like take photos of. Like no wonder I didn't know there was a sparkle on the headstock. Like you have to get this in certain lighting situations. The artificial ones right here in front of my green screen definitely do not do this thing justice. But I think you saw enough of this guitar today that you would know what to expect in person. But this is more of a finish just to appreciate in person up close, just to take a look at it. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this one and we will catch you guys tomorrow on the next one. Take care. Thank you.